snow trapped close to 250 cars, trucks, and buses in the Andes Mountains of central Chile over the weekend. Chilean authorities were called in to help the drivers and clear the road Sunday on the Los Caracoles Pass. It's known as one of the most dangerous roads in the world. The road rises from 2,600 feet above sea level to over 10,000 feet through more than 29 slow turns. The Chilean army and federal police evacuated most of the trap travelers off the mountain, but several truck drivers had to be taken to nearby shelters. The first photo from the Webb telescope is here, and nothing like it has ever been seen before. The image shows a cluster of galaxies in one very tiny part of the universe, including light that's been traveling for more than 13 billion years. You know, a hundred years ago, we thought there was only one galaxy. <laughs> 20 foot waves crashing over the shoreline across the greater Seattle area could happen according to a new study by the Washington State Department of Natural Resources. It would take a major earthquake beneath the Puget Sound with a magnitude of at least 7.5 to trigger a tsunami with those effects. And the most surprising part to the geologist who conducted the research is how quickly those waves would arrive, reaching the shoreline in fewer than three minutes. The study was done to help local and state officials plan for such an emergency. Experts say the best way to prepare is to know if you are in an area that is prone to flooding and plan an evacuation route from your home, school, or place of work. The good news for area residents is that the Seattle Fault has produced just one such earthquake in the last 16,000 years. It's not good news. Americans want to be done with the pandemic, but the pandemic is not done with us. A new COVID-19 subvariant is taking hold. It's known as BA5, and it's very elusive. It's more resistant than previous strains to immunity that people may have gained from vaccines or prior infections. It has quickly become the dominant COVID strain in the United States, and health experts anticipate a new wave of cases in the fall. But one problem is that it's hard to determine exactly how many people are getting infected. Most people these days are testing for COVID at home or not testing at all. As a result, health professionals are not getting as much data as they have in the past about infection rates. The good news is that hospitalizations are not rising. They are far below the record level seen in January. But many questions remain. Many people are done with wearing masks and social distancing. So it's unclear how widely new strains will spread. And while vaccine makers hope to have new boosters shots aimed at BA5 in the fall, it's also unclear whether yet another new strain will develop, making the boosters less effective. Firefighters in Yosemite National Park are racing to save a grove of ancient sequoia trees from an encroaching wildfire that has exploded in size. Backfiring along the highway allows us to introduce low intensity fire, bring it down the slopes to the control system, the road, allows us to get in there, secure it, mop it up, 
extinguish it, remove the hazard trees, and, and be done much quicker. The fire is within striking distance of hundreds of the iconic trees that are thousands of years old. The blaze, known as the Washburn Fire, doubled in size over the weekend and is burning out of control. It has scorched more than 2,300 acres. Nearly 550 firefighters are battling the blaze, and more are coming. They have to contend with difficult terrain and bone-dry conditions that are fueling the fire. They've so you saw him start it, right? To keep the trunks of the trees moist. The fire also threatens a nearby town they where the evacuation fire, the orders are in effect and a highway has been closed. Campers near the fire have also Controlled been evacuated. Fire is Sequoias not a thing. are known to withstand heat, but the very hot, fast-moving wildfires in the parched west are a greater threat than they faced in the past. The fire is creating large plumes of smoke that soar into the air. The cause of the fire is currently under investigation. The only way you're ever going to know what you're made of. I'm going to safely get you out. Oh, God, your heart is on tracing. I'm, I'm assuming, you know what, I'm gender assuming, too. I just need to get with it. I'm going to open this, and you just scurry right out there, back to your happy, whimsical life. I scream, everything is fine. <laughs> you were right the first time. No, that way. Boom. No! <laughs> the only way you're ever going to know This month marks the 75th anniversary of the mysterious flying saucer report in Roswell, New Mexico. Initially, it was reported that a rancher discovered a flying saucer that had crashed. But the Army quickly debunked the 1947 incident by saying a weather balloon had fallen from the sky. But skeptics say that was just a cover-up. It's been 75 years now, but the public certainly hasn't forgotten. And the mystery of UFOs and aliens is forever attached to the town of Roswell, New Mexico. One species of fish has found its way into the Colorado River, increasing the risk of extinction for an already threatened species. Water levels in Lake Powell have dropped so low. And from New York City's mayor and the city's Department of Environmental Protection will give inflatable dams to residents of flood-prone properties. Flooding is an ongoing problem in New York City and especially affects marginalized communities. Data from Redfin shows that more than 13% of homes in formerly redlined or yellowed line neighborhoods, primarily lived in by people of color, are more at risk for flooding than other New York City neighborhoods. The plan for the dams is that residents will take personal action to protect their homes as the city struggles to update permanent infrastructure. Major causes of disastrous flooding in New York City are hurricanes and tropical storms. Last year, 13 New York City residents died from Hurricane Ida. 11 were residents of basement units, which are especially likely to flood. NOAA forecasters predict an above-normal hurricane season this year, which we're only about a month into. And as hurricanes and other heavy rainfall events become increasingly common and more severe due to climate change, small measures like like this could end up saving lives. Strike in Florida. That's a truck driving down the road. 
Lightning hit it during a typical summer storm in the Tampa area. Thank the only way you're who live in areas prone to wildfires are familiar with these words of warning. When it's smoky outside, close your doors and windows and run an indoor air purifier. But a new study from Stanford University says many people ignore that advice and that can send air pollution soaring inside homes. Researchers analyzed data from more than 1,500 in-home air pollution sensors across the country. They found that on heavy smoke days, indoor air pollution remained three to four times higher than public health guidelines recommend. The likely culprit? Open doors and windows, leaky buildings, and lack of indoor air filtration. Exposure to wildfire smoke can cause serious medical problems, and that's even in healthy people. degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature that a new study conducted at Penn State University says is too hot for the human body when it comes to normal daily activity. But it's not just about the number on the thermometer. It's about the combination of extreme heat and humidity known as the wet bulb temperature. This latest study revealed that healthy Everybody people bed. started to struggle to regulate their core body temperatures at 88 degrees with 100% humidity. This is much lower than previous accepted research that said 95 degrees at 100% humidity was the upper limit of safety. Higher heat and humidity makes it more difficult for the body to evaporate sweat. And right, so if you think you're evolving, core temperature. think again. This can lead to heat stroke, a serious condition you're deflating, life-threatening, degrading, requires immediate medical devolving. Treatment. From withstanding 95 degrees to 85, I guess, next year will be 75. Go ahead and play your plans with me. And that needs to learn that. It's gonna be very hot today. I don't know what's the favorite today. But it's nice. It's nice. It's, uh, Whatever, go fuck yourself.